Hey everyone, this is Raja from Charger Games and welcome back to another video of this c -sharp scripting for Unity in 15 minutes series. In this video, we're going to learn about invoke to call a function. We're going to learn how to repeatedly call a function. We're going to learn how to execute delay inside your code and all this interesting stuff. So let's get started. So first of all, as you can see, I'm using the same scene that we had in the last video because that will help us to learn these things easily. So first of all, we're going to learn how we can actually find and search all the cubes in the scene. Then we're going to destroy them with a delay using the invoke function. So I'm going to go ahead inside my scripts folder, tutorial 5. Here I'm going to create a new C sharp script and I'm going to name this one, let's say tutorial 5 unity. All right. Okay, so here I have my tutorial 5 Unity. So first of all here I have created a game controller empty game object. If you want you can simply go ahead and remove this one and create again. So let me go ahead and delete this one. Create an empty game object and rename this one to game controller. And I'm gonna drag and drop the tutorial 5 here. You can also rename it game controller if you want to. So let's double click to open it. Alright, so now in the game controller not game controller in this script first of all here we're going to create a new function we're going to call it void destroy all cubes okay so we have a lot of cubes in the scene and we're going to go ahead and destroy them and uh, remember that all the cubes have a cube tag attached with them so first of all here we're going to create a new array game object array of game objects and we're going to name this one cubes and we have already done these things in the last video that's why i'm going very fast and now inside the destroy all cubes option we're going to say cubes equals game object dot find game objects with tag cube so now this code will go to our scene and search for all the objects in the scene find the objects that have the cube tag attached and it will get all the objects and store them inside this cubes array in order to do that, we're going to use a for each loop. So we're going to say for each game object g in cubes destroy g. So now this code will travel through all the objects inside the cubes array and destroy all the cubes one by one by one. Okay. Now we have done all these things in the last video. So if you are having confusion, please check out the last video that is tutorial 4 uh, and you will have all these things clear. So now this, do, this destroy all cubes function, whenever I call this, it will simply go ahead and destroy all these things, all the cubes in the scene. So now we need to actually call it from somewhere. So let's say I call it from start. So in order to call it from start, I can simply write, I can simply go ahead and write destroy all cubes and like this. Okay. So if I do this. It will simply go ahead and uh, call this function and then we can do anything that you want with it. Okay, destroyed all cubes doesn't exist in the current context. Okay, so we have actually a spelling mistake. All right, so this works. So this way I can simply call it from the start and it will go ahead and destroy all the cubes. Let's see how this works. So let's go back to Unity. And here we have the script attached already. So everything should work. So let's click on play. And now you will see whenever I call this, whenever the game starts, automatically all the cubes get destroyed. As simple as that. Now let's open the script again. Now we're going to add some delay in destroying all the cubes or we're going to add some delay in calling this function. In order to do that, we're going to use something called invoke. We're going to write invoke. And inside that, first of all, we need to write which function we want to invoke. So we want to invoke this destroy all cubes function. So let's copy the name and paste it within strings. So now it will call this destroy all cubes function or it will invoke this function. Then we have to mention after how much time we want to call it. So let's say we want to wait for two seconds and after that we want to call this function. So here we're going to write 2f. Okay. So here as you can see this expects a float value that's why we have written f explicitly to mention that we are going to pass a float value here okay so now we can simply go ahead and comment this one out and now we 
you will see that when we run the game, this invoke function will call this destroy all queues function after waiting for two seconds. All right. So now let's go ahead and save this. Go back to Unity, and let's see how this works. So here I'm going to go ahead and click on play, and you will see it will wait for two seconds. One, two, boom. And as you can see, it waits for two seconds, and after that, it goes ahead and destroys all the objects in the scene. That means now we are able to use this invoke and add some delay in our code. So now we're gonna learn about something called coroutine, and we're gonna see how we can use the coroutine, which is a more powerful way to delay our execution. Uh, and using the coroutine, we can parallelly run multiple codes together. So we're gonna learn how to use the coroutine and how to do the same thing more efficiently. Okay, so in order to create a coroutine, you need to simply write, first of all, let's write a name. So as you can see, in this case, we have written a function. So here we have written destroy all cubes. But here we're gonna write, let's say, destroy cubes. Because we, cannot, we are not going to give the same name, that's why we have written destroy cubes. And the same syntax is here, so we need to give a pair of parentheses and then a pair of curly braces. But as you can see, before the function, we have written void. Instead of that, before the coroutine, we're going to write i enumerator. Exactly same as I have written here. Okay? So you need to write i enumerator, and now it will work as a coroutine. Now you can see that it is giving us some errors, and that's really natural because it wants us to write an yield statement whenever we write a coroutine. So I'm going to talk about yield statement later. So first of all, let's see what do we want to do inside this coroutine. So inside this coroutine, the same way we were doing here, we're going to simply go ahead and actually wait for some time and then we're going to destroy all the cubes. So let's first of all copy the whole code and paste it here. So now the destroy cubes function is doing the same thing. It was the destroy all cubes function was actually searching for all the cubes. Then it was destroying all the cubes in the scene. The same way this coroutine is also searching for all the cubes and then it is going to destroy all the cubes together. But as you can see here we had to use a different thing. Here we had to use the invoke to add some delay. But in case of coroutine we don't need to use anything explicitly. We can add the delay directly inside this coroutine. Okay. In order to add the delay, here we need to write yield return new wait for seconds. And there inside this wait for seconds function, we need to write how much time we want to wait. So we want to wait for two seconds. That's why we are writing two here. Okay. You can also write two f. To mention the float value explicitly but I think 2 should work as well okay so now as you can see we have this coroutine and whenever we call it first of all it waits for two seconds and then it does all these things all right now we need to call the coroutine from our start so in order to call a coroutine from the start you need to write this start coroutine function okay so you can write start coroutine and inside that, within quotation marks, you have to write the name of the coroutine. So let's copy the name of the coroutine and paste it right here. Okay? So that's it. So as you can see here, we have written this code and it will call the coroutine. Now we're going to simply comment out our invoke function because we don't need this right now. And now let's go back to Unity and see if this works same as before or not. So let's go back to Unity. And let's wait for it to load and then we can simply play it and check our code. So I'm going to click on play and you will see it will wait for two seconds. One, two, boom. So the same thing is working in a different way. All right. And now as you can see, I have shown you one way to use the coroutine. There's another way by which you can call the coroutine. You can simply write start coroutine and inside that, Instead of writing destroy cubes in quotation marks, you can simply write destroy cubes with a pair of parentheses. And that works as well. So you can either write this syntax or this syntax. Both of them actually works. 
So now that we have learned how we can use coroutines to add some delay in our code, we can learn how we can use it more powerful in a more powerful way to add some delay in between the execution of codes. So in this case, when we are calling this function or when we are calling this coroutine, we are going ahead and deleting all the cubes together at a time. But now what I want is, I want to delete each cube with a delay of 2 seconds. Let's say when the game starts, it waits for 2 seconds, then deletes the first cube. Then waits for 2 more seconds, deletes the second cube. Then waits for 2 more seconds and deletes the third cube. And this way it goes on. So I want to add some delay between each execution of code. And that's what we can do very easily using this coroutine. So now, instead of doing this, all we need to do is, we need to simply comment it out here. And inside the for each loop, here we're gonna write yield return new wait for seconds. And here we're gonna write two, okay? So now, as you can see, this for each loop actually runs for, let's say here we have three cubes inside this cube array, then this for each loop runs three times. So every time it runs, it will wait for two seconds, then it will destroy, it will wait for two seconds, then it will destroy, again it will wait for two seconds, and then it will destroy. So this is how this is gonna work, okay? So every time within the execution of the for each loop, we are making it delay for two seconds. So now you will see a very interesting behavior. Let's save this script, go back to Unity and check how this is working in our game. So now you will see that whenever I come here, let me click on maximize on play and click on play, you will see that 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. So every time as you can see when we run the code, it waits for 2 seconds and after waiting for two seconds, it deletes each of the cubes. So let's say I'm gonna make three more cubes in the scene. So I'm gonna duplicate this cube, position it here. Okay, now let's play. And now you will see one, two, one, two, one, two, and one, two. So this way, it just waits for two seconds before destroying all the cubes. So this is really, really awesome. And you can use this tool, use this functionality to do a lot more things uh, in your game. Now let's open it and learn a few more things. So as you can see here, we are directly saying that we want to wait for two seconds. Now let's say we don't want to mention it specifically here. To know, So we want the user to decide for how much time it wants to wait before it wants to destroy the cube. So if we want to do that, then we can add a parameter to our coroutine. So let's say inside the coroutine here, I can create a new parameter and I can call it float wait time. Okay. So now we have a parameter inside this coroutine, which is float wait time. And now instead of writing two here, I can write wait time. So now, Whenever we call this coroutine, we can mention what is the value of this wait time and depending on that, the coroutine will run differently. Let's say I pass the wait time value to be one second. Then it will wait for one second every time it runs. I pass it five seconds. Then it will wait for five seconds every time it runs. So now we need to learn where can we actually pass the value of this wait time. So we can pass this when we are calling the coroutine. As you can see here, we are calling the coroutine. So inside this destroy cubes function, we can simply pass the value. So let's say here we can pass two, then it will run for two seconds or wait for two seconds. Here if we pass five, then it will wait for five seconds. And that's how it will work. Now we can go one step further and add one more layer of this. So let's say, here we're going to create a new public variable and we're going to call it public float waiting time. Okay. And now inside this coroutine here, we can simply write waiting time. So this waiting time is a public variable. So whenever we run the game from the Unity editor, we can pass a value to this waiting time and using that value, we can actually 
specify how much time we want to wait. Okay. So now let's go back to Unity and check how this is working. So here we have our game controller. And now from the waiting time, let's say we say one second. So now if I run the game, you will see it will destroy fast after one second. One, one, two, three. Okay. So it get destroyed after one second. I can also pass three seconds here. So then it will simply wait for two, say three seconds. One, two, three. One two three one two three and one two three so this way as you can see it will wait for three seconds and after that it will destroy it so this way we have learned how we can use the invoke function and how we can use the coroutines in different ways to delay execution to delay execution of our code to delay execution of our loops and we can run the whole game loop using this uh, coroutine as well and it is very very powerful you can use it in many different ways so i hope you really enjoyed learning with me in this video and i hope you have learned a lot so thank you so much for watching this video if this video helped you make sure to hit the like button and make sure to subscribe to my channel to get more such videos and let me know in the comments what do you want to know what do you want to learn in the next videos so thank you so much for checking out this is raja and i'm gonna see you in a new video tomorrow